Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in uh, rainy central California. Thank goodness for the rain. I'm um, coming to you today from our MDF here in the basement of the hospital. And uh, I'm just going to talk real quick about what I'm supposed to do, what I'm going to do here this morning and what I'm supposed to do. Um, remember I talked to you about our firewall failover problem that we were having with our edge firewalls, which controls or filters our access to the internet and also filters our access to Cerner, our electronic medical records provider. Um, let me just draw a picture here real quick so it'll help you understand what I'm gonna do here. So we got a primary and a secondary firewall. Um, these are firewalls. I'll show you this in a minute, I promise. We've got going in here, we got this coming in here, we got this going in here. And I'm going to make it really simple. Um, there's a few of you out there that would um, understand most of this stuff, but um, I want to make it so everybody understands. And then there's Cerner's firewalls. One and two. And this is a top of rack switch. And this is a top of rack switch. And no spanning tree protocol and here we do have spanning tree protocol so in the simplest form this is what we got going on um, that looks backwards to me on the phone if it's backwards to you I apologize but hopefully you'll get the uh, you get the gist I'm using the reverse camera on my phone so I can look at my beautiful face um, so we got our primary firewall everything works oh let me write one more thing in here I'm going to put a little dashed line here, and I'm going to put a little dashed line here. And I'm going to write V-Wire. Okay, a couple, I'm going to add a couple of details there. So normally, data, our, our core switch, switching network's over here, and to get to Cerner, we'll... It'll route to a, a Cerner transit address, and it'll hit this, this what we call a V-wire. And this V-wire will basically take it through our firewall into a top of rack switch and then directly over to Cerner. And what a V-wire is, is just a way for the firewall to inspect traffic without having a layer 3 address or layer 3 uh, interface. So it's basically just layer 2. It's a wire. Uh, it's a virtual wire. So... Um, it was a way for us to just set up one layer three address for the Cerner traffic uh, VLAN in our core and not have to set up yet another one here on the firewall, as it turns out, which is what we should have done. Um, but the V-wire was, was slick, it was sneaky, and it was ingenious. That way they couldn't blame any problems on our firewall because technically, from their point of view and ours, our firewall didn't even, it didn't even exist. It wasn't even there but provides all the, the same uh, uh, malware protection and uh, traffic inspection that, uh, that any other interface would on the firewall. So here's what's going on when we fail over. On, uh, I wrote it on the firewall, I shouldn't. It's actually over here on the switches. So on this switch here, the top of rack switch up in the uh, data center, we have no spanning tree configuration at all. Zero, zip nada. On this one, for some reason, we do have spanning tree configured on the switch. And it's not applied at a port level, it's applied at a VLAN level. And that's, I'm not a, I don't understand spanning tree all that well, so I can't explain it to you, I'm sorry. Um, but I know if you got it configured here, you better have it configured here, and we don't. So what's happening is when we fail over the firewall, this link isn't really going down, even though it is. This link is always up even though it isn't. So what's happening is when we fail over, 
spanning tree on this switch is kicking in saying, hey, there's already a path to Cerner up here. I'm going to start blocking these ports. And that's exactly what's happening is when we fail over, spanning tree on this switch is kicking in. I wrote it over here, but I should have written it here because that's where the config is. Spanning tree is kicking in there and um, taking the ports offline. So that's why we're losing connection to Cerner, we believe. So what I'm going to do this morning is uh, attempt to negate those commands. So I am going to do that right now. I'm going to put you on pause for just a minute while I figure out the commands. Be, be right back. All right. Sorry about the nose cam there. We're back. So just going to show you what we're doing here. If I view the STP config on this switch, you can see what we're doing is we're automatically binding to STP domain S0. We're auto binding all these VLANs. So, and what you can see, can you? Maybe, I don't know. Sorry about the glare, guys. But what you can see is up here, Cerner, that's, that's our transit VLAN. Oh, well, it's one of the transit VLANs. Here's another transit VLAN. So what we're going to have to do is disable this. And what I am going to do is basically just negate this command. It says enable. I'm going to do disable. STPD S0 auto bind VLAN Cerner. And I'm going to do it for all of these VLANs because there's no reason for it to be there at all. So, and I'm also keeping a ping going to Cerner just in case, you know, I don't think this should have any effect, but you never know, you know, you just never know. All right. I'm just going to be uh, typing these commands over and over. Um, I could leave the video rolling and while you watch me type and talk to myself, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to pause it again and we'll be right back. All right. So I've finished typing in all the commands. There were more commands than I thought. Um, so I thought all I would have to do is disable the auto bind <clears throat> on the VLANs. Sorry, you're looking at the bottom half of me. Um, so the command should the commands that I saw in the config were enable stpd s0 auto bind VLAN, and then the name of the VLAN. I know that sounds like gibberish to a lot of you, but press the I believe button. Um, so I executed those commands, but then when I uh, showed the spanning tree config again, there were a bunch of other commands in their place that went something like this. Configure STPD S0 VLAN um, add, and then the VLAN name, and then the ports. That, that are assigned to the, that VLAN. Like those commands weren't there before. Where did they come from? Oops, it just knocked my uh, wind muff off. So um, I don't think that'll matter, but I'll put it back on anyway. Um, so, okay, well, then I tried, well, let's try to negate that command that the switch added by itself. And then that indeed got rid of the, uh, the spanning tree commands. So if I do show st show configs STP for spanning tree protocol. Ah, you will see right there. There is no config. It just says module STP configuration and there's nothing there. Same thing over here now. When I said show config STP D STP and then it came down here and there's nothing there. Um, what initially happened is up here, that's where I was negating all those commands. And I said, okay, let's show the config just to make sure they're all gone. Then all these commands showed up. Well, heck, what the heck's that? So it just added them all back in at the port level instead of at the VLAN level. So then I went through, just looking at a few, few uh, status commands just to verify what I was seeing. And then I went through and um, there's the config. Where did I delete them? Okay, here I am. Here's where I started deleting all those commands. And then once I are deleting all the ports 
from the spanning tree. And once I did that, you can see that it's gone. And if I come over here to Cerner, I'm still pinging Cerner. Um, make sure I can still ping. And I'm pinging the switches. And let's see if I can ping Google just to make sure. I'm pretty sure I can. Sorry, uh, let's see, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. You don't know 8.8.8.8 is one of Google's DNS servers. You can always ping that as a quick and dirty internet test. All right, so that's all there. So, uh, it's fun. So that was the work for this morning. Um, now I'm going to monitor it for a little while just to make sure nothing went bad. Um, because you just, you never know. Making sure the uh, config didn't come back. Or the spanning tree config didn't show up again because I wasn't expecting those commands to show up and uh, they're they're staying gone for now <clears throat> so last thing I need to do is save the config which I'm not going to do just yet I'm gonna wait a little bit make sure everything's cool and then the last step will be just type save config and it'll ask me are you sure I'll say yes and it'll save the config but like I said I'm gonna let it run for a little bit just to make sure everything's okay and then hour or two, I'll come back. I won't come back and save the config. <clears throat> oh, one other thing. When we're when I'm I'm still yelling like you can't hear me. I hope you can. Um, one other thing that I always do when I'm doing work of this nature, where I'm not really sure what it's going to do, I don't SSH to the switch. I don't tell net to the switch. I I console in. So if you come over here, please come with me. Sorry about looking up my nose there. So. I've got console cable here, goes to a, you know, th through two different uh, USB adapters, a serial adapter, and then over to here, boop, 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 boop. console port into the switch right there. So, yeah. This is our basement uh, MDF, basically our data center. Go on, look at it. Marvel. And just real quick, as long as we're here, that's our uh, segmentation firewall, our secondary. That is called a dialogic media gateway. That's uh, our Vocera. Uh, it's not our product, but it's Vocera's little badge we use to communicate. That's how it can call outside phone lines. This is a router that goes to UC Davis. Uh, here's our Cerner stuff. Um, what am I looking at here? Uh, there's a Cerner router. This is a Cerner uh, firewall. It's an ASA, I believe. And that's their switch. And that is their local access device that they use to... Um, they can command... They can console into their switches and routers from this device. And they can power cycle them. There's power plugs in the back. They can power cycle it. This is the top of rack switch that I just worked on. This is one of our four core switches. That's core switch four. This is core switch two, another one of our core switches. And here's, uh, we call them more top of rack switches, but they're really, they're really edge switches between us and the county WAN. And our internet comes in through there from the county. And way up here, that's our edge firewall. That's our secondary edge. That's what's being affected by this switch during the failover. And then way up there at the tippy top are the uh, various Siennas. Uh, well, it's only one Sienna. No, there's two. One Sienna is from AT&T. One Sienna is from uh, Utility Telephone, which is our backup internet. So. There you go, a little, little bonus network tour. So anyway, that's all I got for you today, guys. I hope you found that interesting, informative, entertaining, uh, or it just took up some time. So as always, um, guys, I really appreciate the comments. Um, there's been a lot of wonderful comments. You guys apparently like this content. I don't know why, but why ask why? If you, we enjoy what we enjoy, right? I like weird stuff too. You know, I like watching sailing videos on YouTube. And, and this guy that explores abandoned mines, 
I don't know why. We like what we like, right? So anyway, guys, as always, uh, if you like, so, like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, and keep those comments coming. Ask questions, um, and I'll do my best to answer them. I, I won't know all the answers, but uh, I'll, from my perspective, I'll, I'll try to give my answer. So it might not be the right answer, though, so ask a lot of people. Don't just ask me. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you guys all next week. God bless. Uh, there you are.